Hey folks, welcome once again to the Morse Adventures uh, 2024. This is day 50. All right, yeah, five zero. All right, uh, on 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 July the, the 29th, and it is day 37 of our Canadian adventure. And uh, we're still uh, we're still on Prince Edward Island. And we saw a lot of it today, folks. Let me tell you, it was a busy day. We got up early and, and got on the road. It was about a half hour drive, I think, to uh, Anna Green Gables. I enjoyed that. Oh, excuse me, folks. I am tired. I'm telling you straight up right now. I'm tired. All right. Um, had the bright idea last night, and I'll, I'll get back to the day, but I had the bright idea last night that, you know, uh, it's nice and cool outside. It's going to be cool this evening. We're not going to need the air conditioner. And we went to bed late last night. I mean, it was, it was close to midnight. I don't exactly know what time it was. But it was late. And I don't know what time it was when I woke up. But 3, 4, whatever, I woke up and I was hotter than a firecracker. Oh, my heavens. You know. Uh, it did not get cold last night in Prince Edward Island. Okay, I'm telling you that right now because <laughs> this RV was warm. And I didn't want to climb out of bed and turn the AC on because then I'd have woke up my wife. So I just... <laughs> but anyway. Uh, and we... Oh, excuse me. And both of us woke up about 6.30 and, and they got going. But... That's all good. It was a good day, folks. I'm going to tell you. Uh, and I've said it before. You know, we're not here during the wintertime. We're here during July, all right? And, and and next week, we'll still be in Canada, and it'll be August. Or actually, even later on this week. But this area is beautiful. Uh, Prince Edward Island, uh, a lot of agriculture. Uh, I had... I messaged my sister yesterday, uh, uh, earlier today with a couple of pictures that I took that reminded me of where we lived when I was in the 8th grade and, and, and freshman year in, in high school. It, uh, on one side of a red dirt road had a very beautiful potato field. And on the other side was a very beautiful alfalfa field. All right, And that's just the way it was... Uh, there in, in Northern California where we were living at, the, at that time. And I just, uh, it, it did bring back some memories. But there's a lot of agriculture, uh, a lot of wheat, alfalfa, uh, potatoes, corn. Um, you know, just a really, really beautiful area. Not counting all the fishing that go down. Because, folks, let me tell you what, this water's cold up here, all right? All right? You know, I mean... Where we were today, after Anna, Grand, Anna Green Gables Museum, we went to uh, Cape Tryon Lighthouse. And you look out there, and you see nothing but water, because that is the St. Lawrence Harbor, or Bay. And it's big. And then we're farthest far north. You know that water's cold, because... They have all those fishing vessels out there, or not fishing, but uh, well, lobster fishing, lob, you know, lobster and crab and mussel boats, you know. Like, so you between the seafood, which is very good, I've been eating a lot of it. Had another lobster roll today. You know the potatoes, the alfalfa, the corn. You know, uh, the dairy around here. They're busy. And like I say, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. We, we've we've thoroughly enjoyed our time here at Prince Edward Island. But we're here during July and August. I don't even want to think about what it's like here in September, October, through April, March and April. Maybe even into May. Okay? No, thank you. Because I can just imagine this far north and all this water around you and the way the wind blows... Ah, uh, no. You know it's going to be cold. You know it is. Oh, but we bought a few things. After we left there, uh, uh, the, the museum, Anna Green Gables Museum, Cape 
Tryon local, uh, Lighthouse. We came back. The stuff that we had bought, we came back here to the RV, dropped it off. And then we went into Charlottetown and spent five hours in Charlottetown or, or more. Okay. Um, but we've been, been busy today. And then we got back up here. Um, I think about 6.30. But, well, actually, I guess it's about 7.00. Oh, oh, excuse me. Joel and I, you know, get the idea that we'll go to the pool so Christy does laundry because we're out of our way. And, uh, and then she cooks supper, <laughs> you know, uh, late. So it, uh, you know, and I know she's tired. All right. Because, I mean, you know, the, the sun and, you know, it was a little more humid today than what we're used to. In this area, it was still dry compared to back home. All right, don't get me wrong. It was still dry compared to back home. But uh, the humidity was a little higher th around here than what we're used to in this area. But, yeah. So she was a bit tired, and, and you know, here it is. 10.39, and I'm making a video. All right, should have been made about three hours ago. But we were doing things, and things were being done. So, it's what it is. All right, it'll be another late night. But that's okay, you know. I can talk about it. I'm making memories, you know. We're 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 here, uh, you know, seeing an area that neither one of us ever, in our wildest dreams, thought that we would be visiting, and we get to have our youngest grandson with us. So. You know that's it's it's all good it's it's making some good memories you know we'll be thinking about this for as long as we live and joe will be thinking about that much longer okay so you know having said that let's go ahead and get into scripture because that's good too and folks uh, uh today's scripture is is hebrews 12 1. all right and and let me tell you what's going on here oh well, excuse me. This chapter, this section of the chapter, is 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 you know dealing with the race of faith, all right? Running that race, that good race. Paul always talking about running a race, all right? Because he's dealing with Gentiles, okay? And most of those are Greek slaves, so he's putting it into a a a analogy uh, that they can understand, all right? Because even though they might be Greek slaves to the Rome Romans. They still have their culture and their you know and their Olympics. All right, so everything is, you know, uh, as being a, a high school history teacher, you know, I've told the students over and over and over, you know, the Greek slaves were some of the most prized slaves that the Romans could have because the Greek men and women were so well educated and so physically fit. Even as slaves, they still carried on that tradition. And so those were the slaves that, that were in, in high demand. And, you know, these slaves, these Gentiles, are the ones that, that Paul is talking to. All right? Uh, well, not just the slaves, though, but I mean also, you know, the, the Gentiles. And, and, and most of them were, were, in this area, were Greeks. Okay? So... Having said that, chapter 11 talks about some of the patriarchs of the Old Testament. It talks about Abraham. It talks about Abram, or uh, Adam. It talks about Moses and Jacob and Isaac. You know, um, it talks about, uh, you know, Moses and, and, and Joshua. All right. It talks about a lot of these leaders if you will of the old faith all right and then he goes in and 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 how they witnessed you know the 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 goodness of god okay the blessings of god by having the faith all right so then he goes into chapter 12 and this is this is where they're talking about the the, the race of faith 
And he says, therefore, we also. Now, any time that you see therefore, be ready for something to happen. Okay? Because now he's just, just told them all about, like I say, Moses and, and Abram and, uh, you know, Jacob, Isaac, and Joseph, Joshua, you know, all of them. He says, therefore, that's chapter 12, verse 1. We also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, everybody in chapter 11, all right, let us stay, let us lay aside every weight and sin that is so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that was set before us. I told you, he's talking to the Greeks, you know. Um, and, and, you know, say, well, Jerry, why is, why, why is it called Hebrews? And if he's talking to the Greeks, well, I'm fixing to tell you here real quick, because, <laughs> you know, okay, he's, 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 he's talking to the Hebrews. And some of the early Christians, and it is the the church, the Gentile church that he's he's dealing with, all right. Because in the early church, let me get back to where I was here. You know it. In the early church, the Hebrews were oppressed by Rome, but they weren't enslaved. The Greeks were. And as Christianity spread from Jerusalem outward, it was a lot of the Jews that spread this message. So that's why he's dealing that's why it's addressed to the Hebrews, because they were the ones that were spreading it. Okay, helping the apostles, if you will, the disciples spread the word, because they were as as they come, as the disciples witnessed, and people converted from Judaism to Christianity. Then they started building churches around the world. This filtered into the Gentile civilization or society not civilization but society and this is where I was talking about the Greeks and the slaves okay does that make sense I got everybody totally confused now okay so when he's talking about to the the Hebrews the Jews about the patriarchs you know Abraham even back to Adam Moses you know uh, Isaac Jacob, jo uh, Joseph, Derek, uh, uh, forgot his name now, um, Joshua, nice thing, who, who took Moses' place, Joshua, all right, and he's capitalizing, capitalizing, not capitalizing, but capitalizing, you know, in different segments. This is what happened, this is what happened, this is what happened. And each one of these individuals, he has a different point. So now in 12, so the Hebrews understand that. All right, the Hebrews understand that. So now he's going to take that and say, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all those patriarchs, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance a race set before us. This is where he's transitioning over into the you know the Gentiles, all right. Let's run that race of faith. And and one of my commentaries says, you know, that the witnesses is not a a, a crowd of spectators that are watching what's going on right now, but it is those that are watching, uh, um, that you know was had had witnessed God's faith 
okay? His faithfulness, I should say, all right? Christians who, who succeeded them, um, they would encourage them, if you will, to run this, is this to, to stand fast. Yes, yesterday's scripture, you know, watch and stand fast, or day before yesterday, and run that race of endurance, joy, and, and honor, and reverence, and faithfulness to God. This is what he's talking about here. All right. Let us lay aside every weight and sin which can ensnare us. You know, some of the other uh, uh, versions that I was reading earlier tonight talking about the different things that, that we were delivered from, the, that, that sin that we were delivered from to make, you know, uh, easy to fall and stumble. And then Satan can say, see, I told you that you aren't really a Christian. You know, look, you, you're back right back where you started. You know, you, you, you started doing that over again, you know. And Paul's saying, don't be tricked by that. Don't be ensnared by the weight of that and the sins that you came out of. But run a good race, okay? Run with endurance the race that set is before us, okay? And you can go on to chapter 2 or section, uh, yeah, uh, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. All right. So keep your eye on the prize, Jesus Christ. Keep running hard. Keep going. And, uh, you know, as, a, as Christians, as believers, you know, it is, it's common, very common for us to stumble and fall. Every day we stumble and fall. Why? Because we're man. Right? We're born with a sin nature. But the one who didn't sin, the one who was sinless and spotless, showed us how to do it because he overcame everything that we are experiencing. You see, that's what's so magnificent about the love of God. Because he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to earth as a babe. So he would grow up as a human, experience everything that we experience. Every thought, every emotion, everything he experienced. The difference is... He did not succumb to it where we do. So then when we, he went to the cross, he was spotless. He was our spotless lamb. He was our spotless sacrifice on, on the day of our atonement. So when he shed that blood, he shed that for you and me. So that we could run this race, trip and fall, be ensnared. He's there to pick us back up, dust us off, and say, let's go again. Keep on going. And let us run that faith with endurance for the goodness and the faithfulness of God, keeping our eyes on the prize, which is the author and the finisher of our great faith, Jesus Christ. And folks, if you if, if you desire to have that and 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 and, and to be able to to put your faith Faith is the evidence of things unseen. Okay? But evidence things of evidence of things I hope for, evidence of things not seen, okay? You have that faith in Jesus Christ. And if that's what you want, if that's what you desire to have, that ability to keep on going and knowing that even if you stop and if you, if you stumble and fall that you can pick right back up and keep on going. Okay? So, folks, if that's what you want, then just repeat after me. Abba, Father, I come to you as a sinner, a broken vessel that you made whole and I broke through my sins, my transitions, my iniquities. Forgive me, Father, and cover me with the blood that Christ shed on the cross for me. 
that I can boldly be called a child of God and no longer a child of man. That I can worship and follow you and not Satan. That I can run a good race and follow the example that Christ gave us. And Father, I ask that you just forgive me for my sins, all my transgressions, cover me with the blood of Jesus, and also to send me your Holy Spirit to dwell within me, to help me and guide me, keeping your hand upon me, that I may be worthy to be called a child of God and to have the sacrifice that your Son, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Now, folks, if you've said that or a prayer similar to it and you're serious about that, there's, there's just a few more things that I would ask you to do. One of them is to call a friend that you know that is a Christian and tell him you just gave your heart to God. You just gave your heart to Christ. Ask them to help you and guide you. Ask them to, 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 to mentor you, if you will, in this physical world. Okay? Next thing, get yourself a Bible. If you, if you don't have one, maybe that friend that you just called can help you get one. If you've got one that's been sitting on the shelf, go get it, knock the dust off, and start reading it. Folks, you need to read your Bible every day. Every day you need to read your Bible. And as you read the Bible, do that next thing, and that is pray. You pray every day. I pray in the morning, I pray in the afternoon, I pray in the evening, I pray all day long. You know, I'm going down the road, I might be saying a silent prayer. Okay? Because all prayer is, folks, all prayer is, is that conversation between you and your heavenly Father. That's all it is. Okay? And when you ask God just a while ago to send His Holy Spirit to dwell within you, you can talk to the Holy Spirit too because that's part of God. All right? So ask the Holy Spirit that as you're reading your Bible to interpret what you're reading and explain what it means to you this day. Okay? And then the last thing is to find yourself a full gospel Bible teach and Bible preach in church and attend it. Don't say, okay, I got a church. I found one. Yeah. Now attend it. Attend it regularly. Scripture tells us that we need to assemble ourselves one another so it's in like faith. Okay? To hold each other up. That friend you called, maybe you can go to church with them. Okay? So, call a friend, read your Bible, pray, attend church. Folks, kind of a, a, a neat scripture today when you, when you think about it because chapter 11 was all about Paul talking to the Hebrews about you know the old old saints and how that transgresses therefore we as having a great group of witnesses talking about them they have seen the goodness and the faithfulness of God that we can carry on so carry on in God's steed and in the faith that he is the great i am folks we're going to be here again tomorrow so tomorrow night lord willing uh we'll be right back here again all right good night god bless